head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now. Those were the words of that wonderful hymn, St. Magnus, just played by the band. It's the great hymn of the Christian church that celebrates Christ's ascension to heaven. He has risen. He is our saviour. My name is Nicola Hargist, and along with my husband, Ralph, we would like to welcome you to the chapel on Cambridge for an hour of uplifting gospel music from Wellington, New Zealand. Supporting us tonight are the Wellington Chapel Band and singers led by Phil Hawkey and accompanied by, on, on the piano by Mandy Carrion. Our opening hymn tonight is Amazing Love. The words say this, and can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood, died he for me who caused his pain, for me who him to death pursued. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, should die for me? Would you like to stand with me and join me in singing this hymn of praise?
pray, uh, particularly from that, uh, that last um, couple of verses, uh, our chains can fall off, uh, amazing love that we have, uh, that Jesus has for us. Amazing, isn't it? When you stop and think, let's just bow our heads and connect consciously with the God who sent his son to die for us in that amazing way. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you that you are only a prayer away, uh, that we can connect with you in this way. Thank you for your amazing love uh, that you sent your son to die for us, that when we connect with him, that when we believe, make him the boss, the leader, uh, the God of our life, uh, we, can amaze, uh, we can experience that freedom as well. Thank you for your amazing love. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Now listen as the chapel singers bless us with the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer. away in St. Paul's Cathedral in London is a painting entitled The Light of the World. It is modest in size, but the emblems of light draw you close. It is painted by Holman Hunt, 
a pre-Raphaelite artist. The version in St. Paul's is the third painting. The first he painted in 1853. This one was painted later in 1904. Holman Hunt was inspired by the words in the Gospel of St. John's. I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. There are two lights in the picture. The lantern, which refers to Psalm 119. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The other light, which is around the head of Christ, is the light of salvation. The door in the picture represents the human soul, which cannot be opened from the outside. There are no handles on the door, and the rusty nails and hinges, overgrown with ivy, suggest that the door has never been opened and that the figure of Christ is asking permission to enter in. The writing beneath the picture is from the book of Revelations, chapter 3. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and will sup with him and he with me. The band will now play Dean Goffin's The Light of the World, and throughout this piece of music, you will frequently hear the sequence knocking and the words, behold me, standing at the door. And the final reconciliation, O oh Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. May your hearts be opened as we listen to the band and singers.
Thank you, band and singers. It is indeed a, uh, a dark world at times out there, but we hold hope in Christ. The earth created by God is a beautiful place. Would you agree? Yeah. The sort of God's creation and his promise to us is captured in this next piece by the chapel singers. This piece of music holds a very special place for Nicola and I, and I guess our three children, two of them of uh, them are here tonight. Uh, it was sung at our wedding by the girls of Queen Margaret College as we signed the register nearly 24 years ago. lovely, wasn't it? 
uh, voted the number one Christ, uh, hymn in the Christian church today, would you please stand with me and join with me as we sing all three verses of the hymn, Love Divine. The piano will accompany us in the first two verses and then the band will join us in the third. Thank you. Please stand. resident soprano Soolia, soloist. She has been featured in all of our major events over the past year. Tonight she is joined by Morgan King, an up and coming star in the operatic world and a wonderful addition to the Chapel Singers.
2021 saw the registration of a new charitable charity in New Zealand, a new dawn, and its activities are based in Nom Penh, Cambodia. Last year, a fire destroyed some of the cemetery where I was, where I installed uh, 13 uh, wash stations and toilets in a slum in the centre of the city. New Dawn partnered with the folk there and uh, re rebuilt that community. One of the highlights of last year uh, was a beach trip in December uh, where community folk, uh, 183 of them in fact, crammed onto three little buses and headed off to the beach. It's hard to comprehend uh, to Kiwis just what a treat the 26th of December was for adults and children alike. Key in recent activities was locating a scavenger community at Pek Trakong Moi. Chun Lim, our man in Nom Penh, quickly established good relations with the folk there and developed his own English class. Uh, Pek Trakong Moi is a dump site where children and adults pick over the scraps and sell those to the, scrap, to the scrap dealers. Uh, a new dawn are committed to looking after these kids and uh, we are establishing a care centre there. A building has been secured and we want to look after little ease from two to six so that their parents can uh, get better work. And so we're just uh, employing staff now and they will be guided by early education specialists here in New Zealand but also those with experience in Cambodia. Adding to our hope for that community in that terrible situation is that we might be able to start a commercial entity and give the pride of proper employment to men and women who work there. So we're starting. They need you, they need me, and they need trust. Thank you, Rob. What an amazing charity. If you have a birthday coming up and you have a favourite hymn, please make contact via our website and we might be able to include it in one of our future live streams. This evening, my great uncle Stan Abraham, all the way from Toronto, Canada, is turning 90 years old. He has been a member of the Canadian Staff Band and a committed Salvationist all of his life. We have chosen one of his favourite hymns to perform tonight, Just As I Am. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou biddest me to come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am, thy wilt receive, will welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve. Because thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come. Tonight we will listen to a piece specially commissioned for the chapel band by Dudley Bright in London. Dudley is a close family friend. He has recently retired as the lead trombonist for the London Symphony or Orchestra. And he is also a prominent Salvation Army composer and music musician. I invite you to listen to this euphonium duet played tonight by Warwick Young and his son Lachlan.
The reading for tonight's holy message uh, that Nicola is just about to uh, present us is from John's Gospel, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Tonight, I would like uh, to share with you uh, some very precious items to our family. Uh, The first one belongs to my eldest son, Jono, and this is Snuggly. It was a beautiful big blanket when he was born, and he used to take it and uh, he would suck his thumb and hold it, and it has got smaller and smaller over the 22, well, he doesn't use it now, Um, he would kill me for that. But that was, this is Snuggly, very precious to Jono. We could not get him to sleep unless we had Snuggly. Uh, Then the next item belongs to our son Luke. And this is Mervyn and Marvin. And they uh, were made, and he made the clothing for Mervyn and Marvin. And again, uh, they were very precious to him as he loved everything about monkey. He could tell you everything about monkeys. Um, and different sorts of monkeys. And then we had a little girl arrive in our family, and these teddies appeared, well-loved, very original names, pink and purple teddy. (laughs) Uh, But they were very loved by Caitlin, and once again, we could not get her to sleep unless we had pink and purple teddy. Um, Pink teddy, I think, is about the... 10th teddy we owned of Pink Teddy. Uh, We managed to find some and buy some. And finally, myself. This is very precious. This is a Raggedy Ann doll that my grandma and granddad Coffee gave to me when I was about eight years old. And as you can see, once again, she's very well loved. And uh, she is very worn as well. My Raggedy Ann doll. No one sees the pricelessness of these items except by the one who loved them. There are two truths about human beings, whether we want to admit it or not. All of us are rag dolls. We are all flawed, we're wounded, broken, bent. And ever since the fall, every person in the human race has lived on that ragged edge. Partly our raggedness is something that happens to us, like maybe genes set us up for certain weaknesses, like inherited illnesses, and our circumstances that we have been raised up in. Uh, But that's not the whole story. Each of us makes our own deposits into the ragged account of the human race. We choose to deceive when the truth begs to be spoken. We grumble when a little generous praise is called for. We deliberately betray when we are bound by oaths of loyalty. Like ink being poured into a clear jar of water, our raggedness permeates our whole being our world, our thoughts. We are ragdolls, but we are God's ragdolls. He knows all about our raggedness, and yet he loves us anyway. Psalm chapter 17 verse 8 says, and speaks of God watching the psalmist as the apple of the eye. And this phrase is actually used a number of times in the Bible And it translates literally as little man or daughter of the eye. And this is based on what happens when we look at a person point blank and you can see yourself in the eye of the other person. If we apply that to our relationship with God, we ourselves are reflected in the gaze of the Father. You are the apple of God's eye. 
God sees us with so much clarity. He sees us, warts and all. But when God looks at us, that is not all he sees. He also sees who we are intended to be, who we will become in his love. When we experience and truly understand it, we want to share this with others. We don't pass this on because it makes us better people or better Christians. We don't do this because it will get us into heaven. We pass it on because we have experienced something so amazing and we don't want anyone else to miss out on it. God's mission is to show his unconditional love to every person and show them the life of freedom. Our mission comes from when we understand and experience God's love, we live in confidence of God's love, knowing that we are each God's ragdoll, but that God loves us unconditionally. And then we want to share that with others or help others to understand God's love for them. Not because we have to, or to earn God's love and acceptance, but to pass on this incredible gift to others. Simply, it is living our story, sharing how we received the free gift of God's unconditional love, which is worth more than all the money and the jewels of this world. I encourage you tonight that if you have not received this amazing gift, it is not too late. And I would encourage you to talk to someone about this later. Good message, Jane. I don't, I don't know about you, but I need time sometimes to um, kind of reflect and think about what has been said. And so now uh, to do that, um, Morgan King, uh, who is an amazing singer, would you agree with that? Yeah, amazing, absolutely. Uh, is going to sing, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. So um, as he sings that, just reflect and uh, maybe something that Nic Nicola has said tonight uh, may have touched your heart as well. Thank you.
we continue to meditate um, on those words. Uh, the band's going to conclude with Sherbet's To The Music. Uh, the soloist is Phil Daly. And so, as a final word of blessing or benediction, uh, I'd just like to bring to you a well-known uh, benediction, but I want you to be involved. I want you to stand uh, where you are. And would you repeat with me these words? May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Well done. Please be seated.
for Morgan and Olivia. Uh, please, can I get you to stand up? Put your hands together for them. <laughs> for Phil and Mandy. And for Wayne. Awesome. And most importantly, for yourselves. Well done. time together. Uh, let's continue this on, uh, either in here talking with each other, it's good to connect isn't it, uh, or into the social hall just next door, but it'd be great to chat with you and talk with each other, so kia ora, thank you all.